Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. My name's Joe and it's a Friday and we're back in the workshop today to do a modification on the mill. So the mill I've got over here is a major GH40 and it's a round column mill and as good as this mill is, all round column mills suffer from the same problem and that's when you want to raise and lower the head by undoing the locks on the back. The head has a tendency as you're raising and lowering it to swing round just like a pillar drill does. So I've been working over the last couple of weeks on making some clamps up and I finally got all those clamps finished. So today I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what I've done over the last few weeks on and off and what we're going to be doing today to eliminate hopefully the movement of this round column mill. So if you've got one of these machines or thinking about getting one then stay tuned because this modification is definitely worth doing if you have got one of these. And as always guys, if you're finding this content useful at the minute and want to continue to see more, then please hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do and what I've been working on. Let's start off then by looking at this drawing that I've done of my round column mill. First of all, if we ignore the fact it looks like it's been drawn by a five-year-old, and let's just look at the idea itself. So down here we've got the mill table, up here we've got the round column part of the mill, and we've got the head. So my plan is to make two clamps that clamp around the round column part, here and here, and have a bar coming off of both of them, which I can attach an upright bar to with some linear bearings, and then that should attach over to the head. That way it will stop, when I undo the head, any movement or flex will be taken up by this bar. So I've seen a few modifications done like this on YouTube already and they seem to be really worthwhile. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos. So over the last couple of weeks then, I've been working on these clamps. So these clamps are going to go top and bottom and they're going to go round the round column part of my mill. I've made these as a two part that you can do up and clamp tightly onto the column. And on here I've got a flat machined face on there which my extension bar can come out to. So I've not really done any more machining since these parts. So today I'm gonna to share with you a little bit more machining, bit of welding, bit of fabrication to get these bars to come out of here. So these brackets that I've made have just been made out of aluminium, fairly easy to do. I made them out of some existing parts that I managed to find on eBay. Good old eBay. So the plan is, if you imagine this is clamped round our round column, we're going to get this bit of box section, we're going to weld this part onto here. With that part welded onto there, we should be able to drill and tap a hole, two holes in there to fix that on there. Still on this bottom one actually, it'll be a lot easier to show you. So if you imagine that's going to go on there, we're then going to weld these parts onto here as like a T section, bore out a 30mm hole in there, which should allow us to sit that in there like that, and once that's up there, top and bottom, we've just got these 30mm linear bearings, which which will slide up and down here when you want to move the head up and down. So that's the plan. I think first of all we're going to start by welding and fabricating these up so I can get them attached onto the clamps and we'll go from there. To get these holes in in exactly the right position on both pieces, I'm using the back of my jaws here as a reference face and now the drill's set up, I won't be moving the X and Y axes. So once I've drilled out this part, I can just swap it straight over and drill the next part out. So let's start with that. I'm happy that's all flush on there. Little bit of cutting oil into this centre drill and away we go.
Oh my god. So everything that could have gone wrong then probably did. What a nightmare. So where to start on that one quickly? So just doing drilling the hole and an old chuck that I've been using decided to give up the ghost and one of the jaws snapped. Disaster number one. Disaster number two, as soon as that jaw decided to snap, it then fell out of the Morse taper. Brilliant. Oh, well, luckily the part isn't a complete scrapper. It didn't actually do any damage to the part, so we've got what we needed. We've got a hole bored out into our 2B1 box section, so that's brilliant. So the next thing I think we need to do now is we need to weld the bottom and top square tubing that we've got onto that. And once we've got to that point, I think I can then start to drill and tap some holes. Oh, let's hope it all goes well after this one. Right, welding all done, we ended up with this piece of metal and the plan is with this piece of metal is it's going to attach onto our clamp so if you imagine this is our clamp we're looking at something a little bit like that. So we've got a few things left to do to get this operational. We need to drill and tap two holes in the bottom here. We also need to drill a hole in here and tap a hole in here and the same on the other side and once we've done that we can cut this in half and then this will act as our clamp to clamp hold of our upright. So we've got a little bit more machining left to do and once we've done that we can test it out and see how it sits on the mill. So I'm going to head over to the milling machine now and get drilling. To start with then we're just going to drill these out to accept an M8 tap so I'm going to take them down to 6.8 millimetres So these aren't critical in the location of these, but it is important I get, try getting them fairly central. So because of that, they're 10 mil in and 10 mil out from the side. With these two holes drilled out to accept an M8 tap, I now need to flip the part over and drill this side out to also take an M8 tap. That is all our holes drilled in this piece. Right, gonna take this over to the bandsaw now, cut it up and then tap our holes. My apologies, I forgot to hit record on those last few clips, so we have skipped forward a little bit, but I've got most of this clamp mechanism here done now. And the way this is gonna work is our 30 mil steel upright is gonna sit in there. And once it's in there and we're happy it's in a good position, all you then do is do the clamps up and that locks it in place. Ooh. Lovely. So the last thing really we need to do now is transfer the two holes from this end into the clamp that goes around the round column mill, drill the holes, mill them and when that's done we should be able to mount that on there and get the upright in. So I'm going to crack on with that now, once I've done that I'm going to get back to you with all this mounted on the mill and we'll see how it all sits. Oh. 
Oh, oh my God, it's sweaty. Excuse the hot look on my face. I've just had to probably do something super dodgy that most people probably wouldn't even think about doing. But I've finally lowered the bench. I know that's got nothing to do with today's build, but I was really fed up with this being so high. So I've lowered it by 15 centimeters. Really dodgy, but I couldn't deal with it anymore. So back to the modification that we're doing. We've got it all mounted onto the round column mill now. And just eyeballing it at the minute, it seems fairly level, which is a really good sign. So the next thing we need to do now is attach something to the head, which goes across to the bearing. I think I'm going to roll that over for a part two, just because I'm so knackered from lowering that bench. It's getting really muggy in here. So I think we'll leave that to another day. But I hope you've enjoyed this video today. It's been a pretty good modification so far. Nothing majorly has got, gone wrong other than the chuck breaking at the beginning of the video. But in part two, we're going to come back. We're going to get that all finished off and test it out and see what difference that's made to lowering and raising the head. Hopefully I can keep a good reference point and not lose where I am when raising the head. Until then, guys, please subscribe and go back and watch any previous videos if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week when we're going to finish this bad boy off. See you then. Just in case any of you are wondering as well, this is how high the bench now comes up to me. Just about below my hip. So, really easy now to get on there and not get any chips thrown towards my face.